I'm glad you're here. It's wonderful. I believe that you are here because God brought you because I can see that you're coming back. We have some visitors. That's nice. They come sometimes. I guess for one reason because I look bigger on television. And when they come, they say, oh, are you short? I said, yes, that's the way I am. You, you'll be funny. How many people I met across Canada, they said, oh, I thought you were taller. I said, what the difference that makes? Does it make any difference that I'm taller or shorter or slimmer? It, it doesn't make any, di make any difference, right? It's funny. But people have different reasons why they come. Hallelujah. I will put on television and ask David to do this specifically. Pastor Gennady, and under, under that, 5.1 feet tall. So people kind of will know that I'm not tall enough to get involved with. Okay, I'm short, and I have a wife, and grandchildren, and four children. Amen? So I'm not giving you an opportunity. Brother Antonio, maybe he will, but that's different, right? He's not married. But... I am occupied, too late. <laughs> Amen. Honestly, some people would come for that purpose. I came to look for a wife or for a husband. I've seen these things. Lack of knowledge. This is the church. That's not a bus station, you know. It's the church. You don't meet people here. God meets people here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the church when people changes your heart and mind and, and, and do all kind of things. In the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's go back to Isaiah 55. Now you understand those three things that are getting involved in your life heavily until you're going to see the result. The word of God. Mixed with faith, number two. And number three, the Holy Spirit is going to bring to pass, right? So this is what God said. Explaining to the Jewish people in Isaiah 55, my thoughts are not your thoughts. It begins with the thought, not the heart. Thought, the mind. That's why the Bible says, put the mind, put every thought into captivity that is against the knowledge of Jesus. Captivate it. Don't let it grow because it, it may grow something weird and you, you'll believe for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how religion started. I believe in this. You believe in that. Why do they believe? Because <laughs> not enough. No, they just believe. A lot of people, they don't even know what they believe. Have you read this? Have you read, have you read Torah? Parsley, okay, so how can you believe? Have you read Quran? Well, a, a couple of pages, yeah. Have you read uh, uh, the Bible? Never opened. How can you believe? If you don't know what it is. Well, but I heard that this is a good religion. Before we're going to go into Isaiah 55, if you're not hungry yet, I'll lead you to another uh, verse. I am in a spirit of teaching today. You don't mind? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Listen to what Paul says. Very important point. He says, imitate me just as also imitate Christ. Oh, you kidding me? Paul, you're a man. How can I follow you? How can I follow a man? As, well, he says, follow me just as I also follow Christ. Interesting verse, isn't it? Why did he say that? Because every person needs a leader, an example, and a leader. And God anoints leaders, pastors, to follow them. We are not there just because we just have a couple of certificates on the wall. It's the anointing, it's an office that came from Jesus. You understand? 
It's important because we help you to understand the Word of God, not because we know more, but because for an hour or two while I'm here, God anoints me and speaks certain things that uh, it's from the throne. Amen. You don't want to get lost. You want to follow the leader. You want to follow the leader that is anointed, a pastor, and stick with that and be a disciple. Amen. If you want to grow. It's important. Amen. Because it's, see, when we're dealing with these things, with the Word of God and everything, we need a teacher. Like I said before, people from Catholic faith, Sadly say, come and say, what does it mean to be born again? Nobody is teaching them that. So, if there is no knowledge in the word of God, how can you believe? How can you get saved? How can you, how do you know that you are on the right path? Unless you have a teacher, a pastor that preaches the truth. Is that right? And explains to you. In Judaism, I talked to many people, they said, I said, have you read the Torah? You are trying to argue with me, but have you read the Torah? Partially. And you're trying to pers persuade me that you're right? You don't know what you're talking about. You don't even believe yourself. I talked to Jewish people. They said, you believe in these miracles? Do you believe that God opened the Red Sea? It's baloney. It's the Jewish feebles. I said, really? How can you follow this? When blind leading the blind, they both fall into the ditch. Have you read the Quran? Well, I begin to understand a little bit, and you, f you wholeheartedly following Islam, and knowing that this is the truth, not even understanding what is there. Without knowledge, my people perish. So what are you following? The religion, because I heard it's good, it will offer me something. How the devil grabs people and holds them in prison, Amen. Do you know that the Bible was forbidden? It was written in, in Latin for a purpose. Nobody was able to read. How can you know and follow the truth if you don't know it? Jesus says you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. So thank God for the Bible and for the leaders that preach the gospel today. Explaining anointed leaders. Five-fold ministries. Do you understand? That's why Paul said, follow me. He says, don't follow any other leader. He says, you may have many teachers, but I'm your father. He says, I, God gave birth to your church through me. I was the first one. I will not deceive you. Follow me as I'm following Christ. When I look at, looked at this verse, I, I got shocked. My God, how important it is to have a good church and a good pastor that will explain to you the matter. A lot of people, they come to church just to argue. They have no knowledge. And they, they come to church and they try to attack the pastor. You're wrong. Why? Because Jesus said himself, you strike the shepherd, what happened to the sheep? Finished. Why? Because without the shepherd, the sheep are gone. That's how the church has been destroyed. That's why you need to pray for me and for my wife because we are the shepherds here. You, you want us here. You need us here. Amen. You need us. If you, this is your church, you need me and my wife. That nobody will touch us, nobody will attack us, and you protect. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Isaiah 55. This is why God said, my thoughts, not your thoughts, my ways, not your ways. He didn't even say about the heart. He said, my thoughts and my ways, not yours, because you don't know them. How can you follow me? Do you understand? How do you know? How do you know God's thoughts and God's ways? It's through his word. God's heart, you will know later. It will be revealed to you through his word and the fellowship with him. And then you walk by faith in what you know. Don't walk after anybody or any religion or anyone, anyone unless you're really sure. You've studied yourself. You understood that this is the truth. Amen.
That's why the Bible says, faith come by hearing. Faith is to know Christ. See, without the faith that God would give, you will never accept Jesus. God helps you to enter in and then God says, work out your salvation. Begin to study, grow, believe, fill with the Spirit. Do you understand? So faith come by hearing that verse in Romans uh, uh, 10 is not that faith that you think. Your faith that you want comes through the Word of God. Through our knowledge and understanding. Through prayer. Because you don't want to believe in something that you don't want. You don't want to mess up your life. God has given you one life. Don't blow it. Amen. Don't waste it. God has given you a good chance and opportunity. To follow a good God. And you know. Don't expect that the word of God will just begin to manifest tomorrow. It says God brought an example of rain and snow coming down. Let me read it again. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven. And do not return there. But water the earth. And make it bring forth and bud. It makes bring forth. The word of God will cultivate your soul. And it will make things to come up not right away but will make it bring and you water it and you watering and you watering you know I, I know I have some farmers friends in Saskatchewan you know one rain is not good enough when they uh, when they uh, seeded the ground they need a good amount of rain at least for a month to water to soak the, the, the ground for the bud to just spring out and then not even so as soon as the bud comes up, he needs water because the heat of the sun can scorch it. Needs water. Needs water. Needs the word of God. And the word of God is like water. Until it becomes a full grown seed and actually, you know, a seed to the sower, he needs a lot of water. And then you don't need water when it's harvest. He says it's the worst time because harvest could be killed by too much water. So the Word of God will let you grow until you are mature. And then stay there. Amen. Till the harvest. Yes. Hallelujah. I can see this like 2 plus 2 is 4. It's very simple. But you need to water and water and water. And when your seed becomes strong and stable, you apply with faith and the Holy Spirit brings the harvest. Hallelujah. And no wind will kick you off or knock you down it doesn't matter what it is the, 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 your tears will be in God's bottle and your prayers will be answered and you will see the glory and the power of God upon your life this is the desire of my heart can you imagine now to go and feed these poor people that have that as the Bible says don't know from left to right nothing and bring them to the level of the harvest that's the greatest result you can have not healing my right hand or left foot. It's to bring them up to the harvest. Because Jesus is the Lord of the harvest. Oh, hallelujah. Pray for us that God will give us a place that we could start doing the right things. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I think I'm finishing. That was in my heart to speak, to share with you. I don't want you to grow crookedly. I want you to grow like a powerful tree that will feed a lot of people and help a lot of people. Oh, Jesus, this is the church. This is what Christ is all about. Amen? Amen. This is what Christ is all about. Precious God, I pray and I thank you for your word. I pray and I thank you for your power and spirit and faith. I thank you for your mercy and goodness. Lord, I pray that these words that came forth from my mouth today to people's lives over internet and television 
will bring fruit. The Lord will bring fruit in our life. Forgive our sins, selfishness, all kind of things that are from us. Lord Jesus, help us to grow in the right direction toward you. Help us to grow. Help us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let the word of God dwell richly in each and every one of us. And those who are watching me by television, I don't know what religion you are. Honestly, I do not know. I do not care. You may say I'm this and I'm that. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. The matter is, if you know Jesus and the power of his resurrection, that you know that you're going to heaven after you die. And if you are born again, there's three things you must consider now and think. Do I have Christ as my risen Lord? Am I, do I know for sure that I'm going to heaven? You see, to every believer, there's a given an assurance. Assurance. I know if I'm going to die today, I'm going to see my Lord. Unless I made a big mistake and did something that turned off my faith in Christ and forsook him. But my relationship is not, gonna allow, is not allowing this to do. And in my life and in my heart and in my mind, I know that if I die today, I know where I'm going. A lot of people don't. But they're religious. They go to church with hope to understand this. While we are opening your eyes through the Spirit of God today that you ask God for faith to receive Jesus. Jesus is the door. Then you need to be born again by the Spirit. Huh? It's not your uh, uh, work. You cannot do this. It's God by the Spirit will give you birth if He sees that your heart is receiving Christ. So it's not about being Jew or Baptist or Catholic or Muslim or Hindu, whatever religion people can be. No, it's not. It's about the knowledge of Him. The knowledge of Him who has died for your sins. Now I want challenge. I would, I would like to challenge you. If you believe in what religion you are, whatever religion you are, if you believe that you are in the right religion, have you read their books? Have you read their books? Have you read their writings? Do you know what you believe? Do you know what you're standing for? Or you just a radical, a radically believe because somebody said so? No, don't do that. Don't waste your time. Life is given once to you. You cannot come back and change it. The Bible says this way. For it is appointed for men to die once. Die once and there is a judgment. That's it. Only once. Don't waste your time. I don't know. You are Jewish. You're Muslim. You're Hindu. You're Christian. You can call yourself whatever you can. Whatever you want. But do you know the truth? Do you know what you believe and why? Is what you believe is leading you to heaven. It's leading you to the right, to the true God. Find out. I want to challenge you to open the writings that you believe and begin to read and see if they will lead you to heaven. Or they just need, will make you to obey some men that wrote this? No. You don't want that. You want Jesus who died for your sins, who loves you, not condemning you, but loves you and who wants to set you free, not to put you into bondage. Open the Gospels. Begin to read with an open heart. As you want to understand a certain subject, read it that way and say, Lord, open my heart. I want to know the truth. But if you're ready today, if you just read it today, the simple prayer may do it, may not. But the thing is this, I will still pray with you. I'm not a heart opener. I cannot open your heart. It's only God can do it. God knows your heart and mind. So whenever you're doing things, whatever, whenever you are accepting God, whenever you're doing these things as accepting God, you have to do it from your heart. From your heart. And if you are, let me pray with you. If your heart is opening right now, 
let me pray and lead you into that prayer you can say after me this prayer but with your heart being opened say Lord Jesus I want to know the truth I want to make sure that I'm going to heaven I'm a human being created by God and only one God the Creator Lord if you my Messiah if you my Savior lead me and save me and show me because I am opening my heart to you as the truth and I give you the praise for that miracle in Jesus name oh I feel the anointing I'm telling you God hears the prayer and God will answer you thank you for watching and God bless you Shalom amen and amen and amen I love the Word of God it's the Word of God that set me free through Jesus Christ the Bible says that the Word of God is like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces the Word of God is setting us free Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free we must know how the Word of God works now obviously a lot of people maybe don't even know who Jesus is a lot of people maybe don't even know what does it mean to be born again I would love to explain that to you I would love to pray with you on the phone I would love to talk to you and and, and give you some some advice and counseling through in the Word of God not about any other issues but about the Word of God and explain to you how to receive Jesus Christ a lot of people are religious but they're not saved they think they are but some people call us and say what does it mean to be born again it's a wonderful curiosity you know there's there was Nicodemus in the Bible in John chapter 3 open it up and read and this religious man he was a high teacher a very 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 important teacher in Israel and yet he didn't he didn't understand what Jesus was saying and Jesus explained to him that unless you're born again you cannot come into the kingdom of God and you the sea well we live in a time that people are not very educated in the Word of God it takes a good spirit filled church not religious church but spirit filled church and and the minister the pastor that will teach the Word of God hallelujah and then you become a disciple the Word of God it's not just a book that you read once a year the Word of God is the study guide it's a book that you want to study if you have any questions concerning born-again experience if you have any questions concerning heaven hell eternal life Jesus or any other issues or or, or um, um, about God just give us a call I'm sure with my experience with over 25 years full-time in the ministry I can help you amen and also I can pray with you for your needs so give us a call as you see our phone number on your screen or write to us you can write to us there is a phone number and the physical address mailing address that is a new address so please make a note of it and write to us and also I would ask you to send us today a gift we do need your support within the last three months our support went down and it's dangerously low dangerously low you're still there you're still paying the bills like through our teeth but we do I don't even take salary I don't know how I live but it's just by the grace of God but I cannot take any salary because I have to pay the bills well friends we need partners we need supporters we need friends like you that will give and help us to stand and to withstand and to stand I know sometimes it hurts because of the economy whatever happens out, out there you know but you, you see God's economy is always the best so plant your seed today into this ministry and be blessed as well and I know that God will look after you as well if you're looking after his work thank you so much for your support thank you so much for being faithful God bless you give us a call if you need an additional prayer give us a call until next time we love you and God bless you bye bye we glorify your name Lord Jesus
Hey. 